We have a box of corals right here. What up, Fish Tank Ninjas? What we got right here is an update on Beauty, the 90-gallon reef. But first, guys, I want to let you guys know that tomorrow, that is Thursday, I will be doing a live stream from 2 to 4-ish. Hope to see you guys there. But that's not the only update. Today's update is on corals, and I am excited. I'm not only excited to catch you guys up on the last few weeks of this hobby, but because some people would argue the most important part of a coral reef tank is, in fact, the corals. Just to be clear though, guys, we dip all of our corals in Coral RX before we put them into the tank. We let it sit there for about 10 to 15 minutes. I am interested in the bear method, however, but haven't quite took that plunge yet. With that said though, I want to be completely honest with you guys and let you guys know that I am not exactly the biggest fan of colonies. Yes, I have a decent sized tank. And yes, it's going to take much longer for me to actually have this tank look filled out. But there are reasons I prefer frags over colonies, but that is a video for another day. Today, we're just going to talk about what we found for beauty. And we found some beauties. First of which I picked up was an orange Monty cap at Ocean Life Aquarium in Houston, Texas, the home of two drop top arenas. I picked this frag up shortly after Princess was put into the tank. The cycle was done, and I honestly was just curious. I truly just wanted to see how an orange Monty cap would do in an almost freshly moved probably just finished doing a mini cycle tank. Now if you guys do not know, the Orange Monty Cap is an SPS coral, also known as a small polyp stony coral. Now these corals are actually on the harder end of the coral spectrum of difficulty. This is also a coral that I was interested in having in the main display, as in most reefers are, but it's also very common and very inex inexpensive to pick up. For only about $10, I was able to get these two nicely sized frags and hopefully see them progress in my tank. Worst case scenario, guys, I'm out a few bucks. But due to the general difficulty, I knew that it would be a very decent indicator if I would be able to keep other corals in beauty right now. Just so you guys know, the Monty Cap did well. About a week after putting her in, there was no discoloration. It looked like it started to even encrust a little bit onto the rock I put it on. Figuring that if this SPS was looking good, the LPS I've been wanting to fill in certain spots of the tank would do great. At this point, I was pretty focused on finding a Duncan Coral. I was going around to all my local fish stores and checking the forums. When Steph and I walked into fish gallery, we started looking around at the fish dock and Steph just wandered off. Are you wondering where I wandered to? This little coral caught my attention. It was waving its little tentacles so nicely at me. And for some reason, I really loved the way it looked. Under the lighting though, it looked really white. And now I am a beginner, as you know, so Anthony was nervous about the whiteness. As he explained, it might be bleached. Which I learned, bleaching meant a lack of zooxanthellae present in the coral, aka the symbiotic algae that lives within the coral was a lacking. Now that doesn't mean it was dying necessarily, it just meant that it wasn't exactly healthy, so it would definitely need some more TLC, some tender love and care. Anthony is really picky and he didn't really want this in the tank. He has a vision, and I'm more of the impulsive gal. However, I really, really was in love with it, and I wanted to give it a chance. I hadn't noticed a coral of this shape before, and I thought it was really quite interesting. So I bought it anyways, in hopes that it would thrive in our tank. When we got it at home, it actually didn't have a white color. It was peach! This frog spawn was a pinky color that was so beautiful and so pastel. 
Now, it did take a little while for it to fully bloom, but when it did, it was such an amazing surprise. By the way, y'all, this is the first coral I ever bought, and I'm pretty proud of it, and I'm pretty protective of it. <laughs> She's cute. About a day or two after this, though, I was just checking up on the local forum, Marsh Reef, as I do like almost every night, and I found a coral Steph actually wanted since she's actually started reef keeping in Xenia. Yes, this thing is not uncommon. But you go to the local fish store, they cost like $20. I told her that maybe, possibly, even though this was a weed in aquarium, that I might get it for her if I ever stumbled across it. And I did. So I could not pass this opportunity up to surprise my lady friend. I contacted the seller in Lucky Me. He lived near my parents. This is about a 45 minute drive from Steph and I's place. But hey, at least I got to see my parents. I headed over there and as always, we started talking reef tanks. You guys know how that is when another reefer comes over or you go to another's reefer's house, you can't help but talk about your dream corals and plans for your tank. The fact that I wanted a Duncan came up in this conversation. He just so happened to have two tennis ball sized colonies in his tank. He offered to frag it and I could not pass up on this. The Duncan was exactly what I wanted. In his tank, it was green, with white skirts. The reason I hadn't picked one up yet was not because I hadn't seen a Duncan. It's just I haven't seen one of this coloration until now. He fragged it right there and unfortunately, as much as I wanted to keep talking reefing, I had to go surprise Stephanie with her little baby Xenia frag. We placed it in the sump because of how aggressive though that it grows. And decided that all the corals that she wanted that were just going to be too aggressive for the tank, i.e. mushrooms or anything like that, would go into the sump as a little baby display tank. Let's fast forward a bit to June 18th. This was the night that changed our coral life. This was the day we decided to try our hands at some auctions. Boy, it was crazy. I mean, it got to the point where we were coming up with strategies and like sweating. Luckily for us, we won about three frags. Well, we did win three frags, not about. Won an A can just to break the ice. We got it for about $7, and I figured $7 for a two-head A can, that's a win. And because at some point, I do want to have a ZOA, I mean, a, a A can garden. Thing is, they just don't do well in some people's tank for some reason. This is our chance to take a chance on one at a very low cost. Next, we ended up getting the Taiwan Hornet Zoa. This frag, I personally was not willing to lose. And for good reason, look at this thing. This was easily one of the nicest Zoas I've ever owned. And if you remember, if you go back to some of the old videos, you know I had a nice collection going on. Next, we picked up a Gugordi. This was one Steph was not willing to give up, but I'll let her explain that. So I don't know if this will make sense to y'all, but I like these because they remind me of Xenia's, which is what I originally wanted and then found out that they take over your tank. <laughs> um, but they're more like a flower and I think that's really such a cool shape and you know the way they sway is just so beautiful. But we did do some research and found out that these are an extremely hard coral to care for. And sometimes they just do not make it. Now, luckily, the guy at Austin Aqua Farm was really knowledgeable. So when we did see him, he explained how they kept it. And we've kind of just been basing our care off of that. And from the looks of it, it's doing a pretty good job. But after we purchased this thing, I had to hop on the site, the physical site, and purchase a purple hammer with a green base. Outright, just there on the website, no auction, I was going to get it. And this is the coral I've been watching for two weeks now. Figured this is my chance, I'm buying my hammer. Fun fact, we're kind of hooked on auctions. This worked out perfectly for us for a few reasons though. First, we didn't have to pay the shipping. The store is located in Austin, and 
that's only a few hours away from us. Secondly, I've been wanting to check this place out for months now. And now, we had a reason to. Third, Steph's family lives in Austin, Texas. And she was not going to be able to go for Father's Day. You know what that means, guys? Road trip! Everything has been in the tank and looking amazing for the past couple weeks. In my tank, however, the hammer is a bit more orange than it was at the actual store. Anyone know how I can get it to show more purple? Also, Princess has been acting a fool and burying all the corals that were in the sand. She's trying to actually uh, bury into the sand. So what I had to do was actually take the corals and that's why I moved them to the front. Since we're talking about fish though, I'm going to update you on Luxie. My little friend does not seem to be doing good. I, have, I seriously have not seen it graze and I have not seen him eat this entire time. Steph says she has, but I personally haven't. I'm actually getting a little bit worried at this point. Does anyone have a suggestion on how we can get it to eat? Also, Mahal and Mango seem to have... Um, I don't think it's really like a problem, but they do have a few like white spots on their fins. I would say about one or two. But I'm keeping a close eye on this. As for algae, guys, after talking to a friend on Mars, I learned his Pukani rock was actually leasing phosphate. I think this is also what's happening in my tank because like him, the ro only like specific rocks were covered in algae. This hair algae is going down though because mango, booty, and rascal. But after talking to Nano Tank Man, I learned that phosphate isn't actually leaving my tank just because they ate the algae. It's actually still getting released through the waste of the fish and or inverts. Good to know now though, brother. And thank you, because now I can come up with a plan to beat this. Guys, that's the end of the video. Now it's your turn to partake. Please hit that like button if you like corals. Leave a comment below. Let me know what your favorite coral in this particular haul was. Check out the last three videos if you missed them. And make sure to subscribe. I have an aquarium-related video coming at you every Sunday. And an update on beauty every Wednesday. On top of that guys, don't forget to do amazing things like do something you were scared to do yesterday. Till next time guys, tank like a boss cause you're a boss and that's how bosses tank.